and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Brad Hynek, physical therapist. You're the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today we're going to discuss the top two home exercises and treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome. This, these are proven by science. And plus, we're going to give you two self-tests. Boy, we're going to do it all today, aren't we, Brad? Well, this is a comprehensive uh, video. I've spent a lot of time looking over studies and trying to get to the core of it, the two best things you can do at home. I think this is it. Well, we appreciate you putting it at the time, Brad. Well, By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, you want to join us on our website, uh, bobandbrad.com. Yes. Go to the giveaway section because we're always giving something away. This week we're giving away the uh, where where are they right at? up oh, there, Bob. Up here. That's we right. got we got them locked on yeah, the wall where they I took the, the suction work. cup here. The self massaging your trigger points and knots out. You can do it either laying on the floor, you can do it on the wall. Other nice little devices. Yeah, they can you even use it on the bottom of your feet if you're having a little plantar fasciitis. Good point. So you can find the contest also on Facebook. Be pinned to the top of the page. Yes, yes. Want a short version of us? Go to Twitter or Instagram. Sixty seconds of Bob and Brad. TikTok too? And TikTok. TikTok. There you go. All right, Brad, take it away, sir. Uh, all right. So carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, like I said, I, I did a, a fair amount of research on this to figure out, to boil it down to what we have here for results. But let's talk about what is carpal tunnel if people aren't aware of it. And uh, the symptoms, I do want to talk about that, is typically pain in the hand, numbness or tingling, uh, and it's specific to uh, location. The ring finger, typically just half of the ring finger. Half there we go, finger. that's digit number four, three, two, and one, the thumb. These four fingers, if you will, will have these symptoms. symptoms. Yeah, if you're having symptoms more over on the pinky and the small, it's probably not Carpal not, tunnel. Not carpal tunnel. It might be something else. And the reason for that is, is the carpal tunnel, which I, I've got this brace on. We'll look over here. Is you know the carpal bones are here and they form a tunnel in your wrist. There's only one nerve that goes through the carpal tunnel, and it happens to be the median nerve, and that nerve uh, innervates those four fingers. Yeah. So you can get burning also, and you can also get weakness. Uh, sure, one right. Thing that we look on people who've had it for a while. This fatty part of the thumb, yep. it gets smaller because it's it's. There's more than fat yeah. in there. There's a big muscle. Well, <laughs> it, it yeah. becomes small, especially when compared to the other side. If sure. the other side doesn't have the carpal yep. tunnel, and that is syndrome. you know more longer term, longer term, more right. severe uh, symptoms. Uh, so again, you know, the pinky finger is innervated by the ulnar nerve, which does not go through right. the carpal tunnel. So that's another scenario. Yeah. All right. So how do we test for this at home? There are some simple tests you can do. Do you want to demonstrate? This is actually probably one of the easier things that you can test for at right, home. Right. So there's first Phelan's test. Right. Now. This is the way they're saying, right? Because there's also you can go like well, this, yeah. So. so when I looked at both ways, yeah, I, I usually do it this way, but I will do the other way as yeah. well. I'll start out like Bob has here, so he's the back of the hands are touching, and yeah. then you maintain them, touch like you got a C clamp there, yeah. and bring your elbows down to where they're at end That's range. About as far you as got I'm pretty going. flexible wrist, Bob. I didn't think so. Some at all. people won't be that flexible. Oh. Others may be more. I, I'm not. So, Anyways, you hold it there for. 30 to 60 seconds, and if you get the symptoms of numbness, tingling, burning in your hands, that's a positive, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you definitely have carpal tunnel. Positive doesn't mean good either. Positive means you have it. Well, yeah, but we're going to do another test, and if both are positive, you can feel... No, what I meant is people think oh. positive versus negative. <laughs> right, and, I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah, that so, can be confusing. P yeah, positive means... It's actually... We think you have it. It's indicative yeah. that you do have it, yeah. So you could also do it this way. Yeah. You bring your elbows up the same thing and hold it that way. Right. You may want to do it both ways. Yeah. So. And then add the second, or if you look at it that way, the third test is Tenel's, which is a tap test. Sure. Where your palm is up like this and right over the carpal tunnel. You don't tap real hard. It's not like you get a little hammer. You just, with your, with your finger, you can use two fingers and tap, you know, about like this for 30 seconds. And if that's enough to irritate that median nerve, which is in there, uh, it's a positive. In other words, it's indicative that you do have carpal yeah, tunnel. Yeah, well, the people I see that have it, I mean, they, they feel it right away, and they feel the tingling, and yeah. they can yeah. actually feel a little bit myself. 
Oh, Bob, maybe you're developing <laughs> I it. do actually have a little bit on one of the thumbs. Uh, Just a, it's real minor. Th this is personal to me, not me personally, but my wife does have it, carpal right. tunnel. Uh, and with her, the next thing is you always want to, the other uh, our potential is there's a carryover or not a carryover, but some neck involvement. Right. And he could have both carpal tunnel and impingement yes. of that median nerve up in the neck. Uh, we're not going to get into that. We do have another right. video on that. Um, so if you're, these two tests are positive. It, it's a pretty good pretty indication. Good chance that you yep, have. Yep, exactly. So what do you do with it? At home, you know, there's all kinds of treatments I, I've looked at from, uh, you know, surgery, last case scenario, injections. We don't really want to do that. You can't do that at home. Uh, then there's some uh, exercises, massage, blah, blah, blah. What I found with the studies is that the two most uh, helpful, e effective and helpful treatments is number one is what I have here is get a wrist brace. Now I talked to a wrist surgeon who has a lot of carpal tunnel, and this is his first go-to thing. Sure. To avoid surgery. Simple to do, not that expensive. You can get them at you know a, a, your local pharmacy. Uh, pharmacy. Yeah, you can do that. Um, you can you know get them online. Uh, one thing that both Bob and I really like is if they're is a metal, metal stave. stave, and they're flexible. They're made to be bent to match your wrist. Right. And I that, wouldn't. Now we're gonna make sure you get a good fit. Right. You know, obviously, I did this and I put it on. My wrist is not in a neutral position. Right. You want to bend it so. Yeah, you're trying to keep it as what we call flat, you know, or neutral as as possible. You don't right. want to bend like this. You don't want to bend up like that. You right. want it right in the middle. That keeps pressure off the median nerve. Right. And when you do that, the inflammation is decreased. And when you have a tight carpal tunnel with inflammation added, that really causes that those symptoms to flare up. Yeah, repeated gripping things can, can cause it. And, of right. course, you know, the big one is working at the computer and with right. the wrist bent. And, and or any jo other job that keeps your wrist at a neutral position or if someone stands at a table or a work spot and they're leaning like this and not really thinking of pushing that wrist into that position. Uh, I do want to mention the part about a wrist splint. It's very critical, if not more important, to wear it at night right, yeah. while you sleep. In that case, uh, I do have another brace here. It's all, this one's all cushioned. It still has a flexible stave to get the proper position, but this is all cushioned up and you want something comfortable for at night. It may not be the same one that's used during the right. day. So um, uh, with braces overall, we're not going to make a recommendation of a certain type for you. Go and check out some uh, online or check out some right. at your at and, your store. And they're not and that expensive. Yeah. You should be able to get one for, you know, around $15 or so. Exactly. Um, so that's that. And the second, second treatment is going to be nerve gliding. So what is nerve gliding? Well, with nerve gliding, you're actually, it's almost like you're flossing your teeth. You're making the nerves glide back and forth through that little small compartment there, up and through the neck. Yep. Uh, you know, you want to make sure that there's no scar tissue binding it down. Right. And this can actually be very effective for people. I've, I've had good luck with this in and many cases. Hence the studies do too. Yeah. So it's a double, double. But. But. Uh, you always very, the but. You got to be very careful with this because. Nerve gliding can calm it down, but can also fire it up. If so, you get too aggressive. If you get too aggressive. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have you be very cautious. You're going to have you do like 10 repetitions. I'll show you in a second what it is. Um, 10 the first day. Yep. Then see how it is the second day. Right. If it's if it got worse after that, then you got to back off and maybe try to try some posture things and and the wrist thing, the wrist uh, splint. And try it maybe and again in three or four days. Right. Try so, it again. What is the technique, Bob? Okay. The, the first, the, so the first part. You bring yeah. the arm up about as close to level as you can. Right. And sometimes people bring it back a little bit too. All right. So from this angle, this wouldn't be it. We want it in back line yeah, right. with your posture. So you're going to bend the wrist back. And what you'll generally find is the, the involved side, if you, if you have one side that's involved, it will not bend as well as the other side. Yeah, so you can compare, you know, the involved to the, the no symptom yeah. side. So you're looking for the wrist to, to extend like this. Yep, so it's going down yeah. with the wrist. But when you extend the wrist, I also want you to move your head this way. Sure. At the same time. So, so we were talking yeah. about this, and I, this is some things I tell with my patients. If you put your hand out, imagine there's a string from your fingertips to your head there. And so when your wrist extends, that string is gonna pull your head that way. So that takes that nerve that goes from your neck to your palm and it slides it this way 
and it slides it back, and that's the gliding part. We want that nerve to glide through that carpal tunnel syndrome, freeing it up, reducing any scar tissues or any other uh, inflammation problems that are causing it so that we have no more interference. Absolutely. And, it, you know, it's, you're not going to allow, you don't want it to create any pain. So if it starts doing increased pain right away, yeah. you got to back off. You maybe not get as aggressive with it to start off. Not with. as many reps or don't get quite so much range. You just do baby. Right, baby. Uh, reps, baby uh, flossing. You like baby. that baby flossing? There we go. That's good term. That's technical, yeah. yes. Baby flossing. There we go. Uh, so again, so. 10 repetitions. And like Bob says, it shouldn't hurt. If it, Don't go with the idea, no pain, no gain. That's going to be too aggressive. If the next day it was you know, better or is the same, go ahead and do another 10 yep. and you can do 10 every day. Sure. Uh, but the big thing is, you know, where the wrist splint and you're going to want to watch your posture. Like uh, as always, believe it or not, posture yes. plays a big role. Um, neck, chest and, and arm posture. Right. We happen to have a few videos on posture yeah, too. I'd say just <laughs> Cause few, it's huh? very important. All right. All right. Well, very good. Thank you for watching. And once again, Bob and I can fix just about anything except, except for, for a broken heart. Broken heart. And this nerve flossing is not going to well, help. We're working on it. Yeah. It's on the side. It is. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay.